set of base letters and place them on one of Arabic word patterns. Suggested by the templatic system, we form a specific word with guidance to generate a tangible idea about its identity. We make those letters pronounceable in the manner that a particular vowel configuration is given to the basic form and verb in order to turn its root into an actual verb. Let's take the root sheen, ra, kef, as an illustration for this idea. From the radicals of this root, we form words related to sharing and participation. If we place them within the paradigm, fa'ala, it will engender the verb sharika. You can see that the short vowel of the middle radical is not always a fatha. But let's not make a big deal out of it, since you will still be understood even though you use it as shereka. And you know what? In some dialects, you may hear shrik with no short vowels, meaning to become a partner, an associate. And with the paradigm fa'ala at hand, you can generate the verb shereka is to take part or become involved in an activity with someone. To form a partnership, to join, to share, to participate, you name it, you have all the synonyms. A definition that interprets the implied idea of association within form three. Form three verbs are overtly suggestive words of action. Invite you to be engaged in wide-ranging activities with others. However, what if you decline cooperative actions? Well, you will have to use some particles to negate the present indicative, the positive one, the one that accepts all the actions. An action that results in the emergence of another tense with the particles that indicates the, the disagreement of the subject with the object or the situation altogether. The disinterest of the subject in being involved with the other party. A pseudo future tense in its negative form, I will not, I won't, introduces itself to the present verb. It is called the present subjunctive. So when you introduce, for example, the particle len. that is used to deny the future to a verb in a present tense. You disturb it in such a manner that it changes its mood. It goes from O sound to A sound. After all, it is in a state of Shock. Let's witness that through the conjugation of the verb shareka in the present subject. Ana usheriku f 
في السباق The verb شارك in the present indicative as we've learned uh, in the last lesson and we know with this tense we have a dhamma as the grammatical case marker أنا أشارك I'm taking part in the race أشارك في السباق I am taking part in the race What if I want to deny this action? So, first we have to introduce one of many of the particles that change the mood of the present indicative and today we will work with the particle len so let's introduce len to this sentence len so what's gonna happen to to the verb inflection len len ushari Ka this o will turn to a to a fatha. Ushari ka. That's the whole change that happens to this tense. So if you know your conjugation in the present indicative very well, you won't have any problems with this mood. Len ushari ka fisibaki. But we we change also actually the tense of of this sentence. Now it's indicating the negative future. I will not take part in the race. Len usharika. What about the first person plural? Nahnu len. Len. So what did we say? We say if there is a dhamma at the end of the conjugated verb, when it's in the subjunctive, it will turn to a fatha. So from ku to ka. Alright? Len usharika. Len usharika. We will not take part in the race. Alright, easy. What about anta? Same thing. Anta, second person, masculine singular. You. Len. Len. Len meaning not, but in the future. Len. To share. See how easy? You will not take a part in the race. Anti. With anti, we don't have a dhamma. So, so what are we gonna do? Anti to sharikina. We know that the ya of address is the subject of anti, second person feminine singular. The noon is the marker of the nominative case when it comes to the present indicative but when we introduce len what do we do since we don't have a dhamma to switch it to a fatha you know what we do we just cancel the noon that's it we cancel the noon and of course, this ye has to be written in its final form. E. Here we go. Len to share key. Len to share key. Fisibaki. You will not take a part in the race. The race. In the race. And same thing for Antuma, second person, dual. What do we do? We know the dual alif is the subject of Antuma, you, both you, masculine and feminine. Len, Len, 
تشاركها and you stop there and of course we eliminate the noon the omission of the noon is the is the actually the marker of the grammatical marker of this mood the omission of the noon all right what about antum antum second person masculine plural to share the well the plurality well for antum is the subject all right and we have the noon so the noon will be gone but we have to add a distinguishing alif uh, alif al fariqa to differentiate it from the original well that belongs to the verb as it's third radical so the collective well or the plurality well well will jama'a has to be followed by an alif after the omission of the noon and to to share what about huma huma third person huma third person dual let's start with masculine you share you share again same thing the omission of the noon huma you share can if it's sibaki what about whom? Third person, masculine, plural. Whom you share kuna? We omit the nun and we add an alif, the distinguishing alif, alif al fariqa. And to share ku fisib len, 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 len. Len to share you share and for whom Len you share and dual feminine dual. To share kani len to share ka fisibaki. What about here? Here, third person feminine singular to share ku. So when you spot a dhamma and you introduce len. You will convert it to a fatha. Len to sharika. Fi asibaki. She will not take part in the race. Huwa. Huwa. Len you sharika. Fi sibaki. We get rid of the dhamma. Dhamma. It's just for the present indicative. Len you sharika. What about antunna and hunna? Remember when I said that they are indeclinable? So, since the last radical has a sukun, so it doesn't show any case, uh, it doesn't change with any mood, and the noon is the sign of the the presence of third person feminine a second person feminine plural that noon will stay it has nothing to do with the grammatical case of the present tense and the same 
is true for hunna, third person, feminine, plural. Yusharik na. So, we don't have any dhamma or whatever that indicates, or fatha that indicates any of the moods. We have a sukun, alright? And the noon is the prefix that, stand, that stands for hunna. So these are indeclinable, they don't change, even though you introduce any particle, doesn't matter. Len, len tusharikna fi as-sibaqi. Len, len yusharikna fi as-sibaqi. So, the conjugations for antunna, second person feminine plural, and hunna, third person feminine plural, do not undergo any inflectional alteration within the three moods of present tense. That is to say, they are never quite surprised at any interruption. Apparently, they get along well with particles. Their moods are stable. Good for them. Lalika.